Hello beautiful ladies and welcome back to my channel. If you didn't already know, last month was Jane Austen month for the Hallmark Channel. They released four new films that were Jane Austen inspired or themed and I watched them all. <laughs> so today I thought I would rank them for you from worst to best in a quick little review. So let's get started. So coming in at number four is Love and Jane. This movie was a little boring if I'm being honest. I had to force myself to keep watching this movie because honestly there were a few things that just didn't do it for me with this movie. For one, the main character. She is a lady who is a writer at heart but you know has to go hard at her job and all that jazz and she's with a man who basically supports her in everything that she does. He even offers to fly her overseas and make all her dreams come true where that's concerned. But for some unspoken reason she just doesn't want to go. And she ends up just breaking it off with him for what reason? I don't know. Maybe because he didn't feel like Mr. Darcy or whatever the case was. So she breaks up with the guy and very soon after meets the CEO of the company that she works for. And of course I'm sure you can imagine what happens thereafter. I don't know, her character arc and story was just kind of lame. And I know some people might be rolling their eyes because, I mean, it's a Hallmark movie, come on. They're not in it for deep plots or, or super interesting storylines. And yes, I recognize that and take that into account. But I'm sorry, the story and just how everything went was kind of just... It felt forced, if I'm being honest. But here are a couple things that I actually liked about the movie. For one, the two main characters did have chemistry. I know, I just said I hated that she broke up with a guy who actually seemed to like her, but they had pretty good on-screen chemistry. I love a good clean romance, and he put his hand on her jaw while they kissed. I also appreciated the fact that the main actress wasn't casted as like a status quo lead actress. She had angel kisses, she wasn't a size zero, her style was very flowery and blousey, and I just really appreciated that. But yeah, it was pretty basic, I'm sorry, but that's gonna be a number four for me. Coming in at number three is Paging Mr. Darcy. So this is another movie that was kind of a typical Hallmark movie with Jane Austen splashed in the middle. It follows an author who flies to a Jane Austen convention and her chaperone is playing Mr. Darcy at the convention. I mean, there's not too much to say about this movie. If you're looking for a campy, clean Hallmark movie, then this one is for you. It's fun and campy and it has Jane Austen. The two leads kind of gradually fall for each other through a series of events of making the convention happen and there are hurdles that they encounter while they try to make everything work. She also has a sister that um, almost ruins everything for her, but anyway. Yeah, I mean, I don't really have much more to say about this movie. It's pretty good. Coming in at number two is An American in Austin. So, there are so many things that I adored about this movie. Oh, well, for one, this movie takes the main character and throws her back in time, literally through the pages of Pride and Prejudice. We get to encounter all the main characters of the Bennett family, Mr. Bingley, Mr. Darcy, Wickham. It's just a super fun film and it really is immersive. Also, I have to say, the sets on this film for a Hallmark movie, just amazing. I loved it. I enjoyed most of the actresses that were cast as the Bennett sisters. I just loved it. For me, when I'm watching a movie, the first five minutes are vital. So if I'm not engaged by the eight minute mark, I'm like, what are we doing? But this movie starts out in a way where you think it'll be a little bit like Love and Jane because the main character gets proposed to and she just books it and is maybe instead of yes or no. She doesn't know why, her friends think she's crazy, so she takes a taxi back towards her house and during that ride she is transported into Austin land. Also, I love the fact that this movie really um, mix and matches the storyline because the main character comes in and since she's read Pride and Prejudice, she is ruining the entire storyline. She's telling everybody about their future, she's walking up and being bold to Mr. Darcy, she's being rude to a bunch of characters and basically forces the Bennett sisters to take actions that they would have never taken otherwise. And so she basically just wrecks everything. And we kind of get to see a lot of what ifs, you know? And that's really fun to me. But I especially like the end because she realizes that she 
has a pretty good thing going for herself and her man. She realizes that it's her and that she needs to make changes and she goes and apologizes to her man once she gets back to the real world and I don't know, I just really liked the whole storyline of self-discovery and her having to come to certain realizations for herself. There is one con in this movie that, I'm sorry, but I can't let this one go. And that is Mr. Darcy. There are certain characters that you simply cannot flub up. Like, there are certain characters that there is an unspoken rule so old that nobody had to write it down, stating that everyone knows you can't cross certain lines with this character. And Mr. Darcy crossed those lines in this movie. Mr. Darcy was much too simpish in the beginning. He was not hard enough. He was not serious enough. They literally had Mr. Darcy in the street reciting poetry to the main character after only just meeting her. I'm sorry, it was just, it was all wrong with Mr. Darcy. They, they, they made him too much of a simp and, I don't know, it was, mm -mm, no. Only towards the very end, when he decides he's going to be with Elizabeth, does he kind of, um, script up, I should say. I don't know how else to put it, but he's a little better right towards the end. But for the rest, he's just... no. And coming in at number one, we have... Sense and Sensibility! Yay! Where do I start with all the things that I love about this film? So, I'll first say, if you are a person who is very closed off to diverse casting, or is like super by the books as far as everything else goes, this is not your film. You're not gonna like it. But if you're somebody who looks at things more objectively and has an open mind to differences and variations of storytelling, then definitely give this movie a go. This movie has a diverse cast, I just through a few ethnicities, and I am here for it. I thought it was beautifully done, and I'd also like to take this moment to say that I appreciated dark-skinned women being portrayed in an elegant, beautiful light. As a black woman myself, role models that we have at this point in time are severely lacking, to say the least. And I just love when I come across things that don't portray black women as bougie and raunchy and classless. So, some of my favorite things about this film. For one, like I said, the casting. For two, I loved um, Eleanor. I, I think that she played her part very well. She fit the Eleanor part very well. Sort of like in the 19 something. I can't remember the year. <laughs> that version. They basically played the part very similarly. I also appreciated the nods to black culture throughout this film. They played weak in the knees during one of the scenes where Eleanor is falling in love with um, Robert. They also played Kiss from a Rose by Seal in another scene at the ball, I believe. And then they also had a picture of Dido Bell on the back wall during a conversation between some people. I can't remember who it was. I think it was the Dashwood sisters. And yeah, there it was. And if you've seen the 2013 movie Belle, then you were probably like, same way I was. I don't know, I just love little Easter eggs like that. I also really liked Edward Ferris. Did I say Edward earlier? No, I said Robert. Well, I meant Edward. I really liked um, who they cast as Edward. He was charming, he was handsome. He and Eleanor had chemistry. I really liked it. Also for this movie, the costumes. Oh my gosh, I cannot believe how well the costumes were done. For a homework movie? Come on. These costumes were beautiful and elegant and vibrant. I adored them. Aside from the one um, wardrobe change that Eleanor and Marianne did for that ball that where she met, um, what's the man's name? Willoughby? That was not it. That was not it. But aside from that, everything else. Beautiful. Stunning. Loved it. So the sets again. I don't know where they filmed this movie, but the sets... Wow. The only con I can think of this film is Willoughby. Who cast that young man? Just no. He did not fit the part. He did not have chemistry with Marianne. He was not a good actor. Sorry. The portrayal was not it. it. Was not good, and they should not have cast him in that role. You've read the book like I have, you know. He was basically in it to that extent. But... Yeah. No. But uh, yeah, it was just a beautiful film and it followed the story pretty well. Like I said, some people are gonna have problems with it just because the casting and the diversity and all that. But for me, this movie did the trick and I will definitely be watching it again. There you have it folks, my quick review of the Jane Austen movies from Hallmark last month. If you've watched any of these films, please go to the comments and let me know what you think. I would love to hear your feedback on these films, what you liked, what you didn't like. 
If you're a Jane Austen fan like me, then you will probably get some sort of enjoyment out of these films either way. But anyway, thanks for stopping by, and I will see you next time. Bye!